Okay, let's see how many people do we have. Okay, we have one second part. Okay, uh, let's wait another one minute. Okay, to start because we're waiting for everyone. So, uh, three past eight, we will start. Another more minute. Okay, so hello everyone. Today I will be running the webinar, how to find your first job as an aesthetic doctor. As some of you may um, have already been after many courses in aesthetic medicine. Some of you um, are um, during the um, aesthetic medicine um, post-graduation school in Amir or maybe somewhere else. But um, at the end, everyone wants to work somewhere and uh, wants to find first job. I'm here to um, tell you how to do it, um, what are the good practices that company do, what are the bad practices, and um, um, at the end you can uh, you'll be able to ask me questions, so um, I will answer to everything. Let's start. For those who, um, who doesn't know, um, my name is Agata and I'm a doctor from Poland. I'm a coordinator of the Masters in Aesthetic Medicine, Nutrition and Anti-Aging. I work in two aesthetic medicine clinics and I also um, work as a GP. Let's start about the um, about aesthetic medicine industry in 2024. This is really important to start here because you need to understand how the world um, looks like right now so uh, the industry the aesthetic medicine industry in this year is booming this field includes treatments like uh, botox fillers lasers therapies skin rejuvenation and body contouring and let's face with the facts so the global market is expected to exceed uh, exceed 20 billion dollars growing at about 10 percent per year and um, we have new technologies so um every single month new technologies are coming out and the, the companies are um, developing new, uh, new new equipment so um, thanks to that our treatments are more safe and more effective personalized tra uh, treatments what i can see from my practice is that right now our patient um, is coming to our clinic not only to have their lips done or to um, to fill the cheeks they want a plan they want one year plan um how to make them look younger and um, they expect us to assess their face um, in a in a holistic way so doctors need to be um, really well educated and um, and they need to um, they need to keep up with the newest trends social media impact and the rise of social media has amplified the desire to look beautiful with many people seeking treatments to enhance their online presence and confidence and this is for sure obvious for you this is what we can see uh, every single day. Increased male interest. This one is interesting. Um, more men are seeking aesthetic treatments, expanding the market and changing marketing strategies. Uh, here is a niche that I can see that really um, men are interested in the treatments. So you as a young doctors can fulfill this niche because men um, i think in the future will need the many specialists that um, take care about their hair especially the, um, the hair and uh, uh, also the hair transplantation and um, and the hair mass therapy 
Uh, this industry offers many opportunities for new doctors with a high demand for skilled professionals who stay updated with the latest trends and technologies. Please remember this word, uh, this sentence, because um, this will be very, very useful, useful um, during our presentation. Okay, let's face with the opportunities and challenges. What opportunities do you have um, as a young doctor who wants to become an aesthetic medicine um, professional and find his first job? So we have high demand. It means that there is a constant need for skilled professionals. Um, every single person right now can become your patient. Those treatments are not um, reserved for stars and um, very rich people right now um, many many people can afford this um, these treatments and diverse treatments a range of non-surgical options it means that right now the patient doesn't need to go to um, to plastic surgeon to have um, for example a little change in their face to have a bigger um, bigger Mm, lips or a better looking nose those treatments can be uh, done by us by aesthetic medicine doctors growing patient base including interested male interest so this is what i have already told you before and right now challenges so a regulatory compliance adhering to new and evolving regulations i will be talking about the situation in poland because this is familiar for me and uh, in Poland, but in the whole European Union, we have um, this uh, regulation that we can't show the names of the products that we are working on, um, working with, so we can't show the company names. And this means that we can't show our patients that we are working on the best possible products and very, uh, very expensive ones. And uh, for me, this is hard because uh, patients right now can't uh, easily recognize if they have a treatment done on the best possible products or not. So we need to deal with it, unfortunately. Competition, standing out in a growing and competitive market. This one is uh, sad for me because I think that doctors should support each other and we should learn from each other. Um, I know that in Poland the situation is hard because everyone can do um, aesthetic treatments. Everyone who, have, um, who has money and time can um, just go for a course and buy one and become an aesthetic medicine practitioner. That's why I think we shouldn't treat other doctors as a competition. We should uh, support each other and um, I can assure you that this will uh, pay off. Um, keeping up with trends, staying informed on the latest technologies and procedures. Uh, this one is, um, is about that if you want to be a really good aesthetic medicine um, doctor, you need to stay updated. You need to watch many webinars, you need to learn from the best, you need to go to, um, to foreign congresses and uh, you need to just stay updated for me this is not a challenge this is something really nice because i like what i do and and if you treat it this way this is not a challenge this is a rather <laughs> a pleasure so um, so you just need to love what you do and keep up with the trends social media impact i can't um, go further without saying that because right now social media are so important um, I know that it can be annoying that uh, it's time consuming, but I would like to show you that social media has um, also a good impact and a good uh, and uh, has um, thanks to that you have many opportunities. So uh, you don't necessarily need to do it, but I will tell you what kind of benefits um, it brings. So expert image. If you want to have many patients, you need to build an expert image. How to do it? The easiest way is to speak about the treatments that you're doing on social media. So for example, on your Instagram, just don't be fake. Speak to those people uh, 
um, from your heart. So really tell them what treatments do you like, what uh, kind of procedures are your favorite, um, what is your style of working, and uh, just show them that you know everything about what you're doing and portfolio. Okay, let me ask you a question. If you want to pick up a photographer for your wedding, where would you stick? I would stick on the Instagram and uh, maybe on the landing pages. Uh, I would like to see the photos um, that this photographer took. And I would like to see if uh, his photos are, um, his vision of the photos uh, is similar to mine. And thanks to those photos, I will, um, I will decide if I like this one or another photographer. The same is in our um, business. So the patient is looking for the for your work, for the for the photos of your work. Um, so they are looking for uh, before and after photos. Um, I think it's really important because thanks that also you can have patients that um, actually like your style. So you won't have people who want, uh, for example, big lips if you are not doing those. Um, so this is uh, this is quite a benefit for you. Society, thanks to social media, you are building a society, and uh, thanks that you can uh, always um, you can always have your group of patients that is well um, educated. So by uh, talking to them, you have them in your um, in your clinic, and they know everything they know everything about the treatment that you're doing so they're well educated uh, advertisements you can always um, show on your social media um, your latest uh, the, the latest procedure that you are doing the new uh, um, the newest equipment of course without um, telling them the company name but still you can talk about technologies and the um, and the product as the substance projects and models this is uh, connected uh, thanks to social media you can uh, easily find models to um to the doctor's trainings if you are looking for a model to have to, to, to do a portfolio uh, if you run your social media in an interesting way you can always find a really fast a model that will be um that will be willing to work with you okay that's all and right now um let's go to the most important part where to find your first job all of these uh, five um five places are actually a real ones it means i know uh, doctors who found their jobs um via those um those canals so the first one is local marketplaces like olx uh, all you need to do is uh, seek under the phrase um, aesthetic medicine doctor job and to write down the city that you live and for sure you will find there um at least two or three um, announcements from the the clinics i know it's easier in the bigger cities but still sometimes uh, even in a small cities you can find an announcement um direct mail phone call to the clinic that you would like to work in and this, um, this looks uh, weird, but really I know um, a doctor that um, found her first, uh, first job in aesthetic medicine by just uh, writing an email to the clinic that she liked. So just um, please have a good CV and uh, write an email that you like the work that they're doing, that you would love to work with this, um, with this uh, people, who are there and uh, maybe maybe you will get the job um, you wouldn't know if you want to try okay facebook groups in poland the most important group is medicina estetyczna wstęp tylko dla lekarzy this is the most popular one there are only doctors and uh, i think every single week there isn't one announcement or um, sometimes from the doctors that are looking for a doctor to um to to cooperate with and sometimes uh, from the from the doctors who are looking for a job okay uh, instagram believe me or not but if you are 
running your social media um, in an interesting way, then someone can just text you via Instagram. Hi, I like the way uh, you, uh, you are running your social media. Do you want to work with us? And I also know someone who um, got this kind of message. Trainings for doctors. Uh, also, it's, um, it's funny, but sometimes when you are a communicative person and you like to talk, you can, uh, um, from word to word, get the job uh, during the, the training. Okay. What questions can you expect on your first um, interview? Um, let's go uh, through this because those are the questions that I, for example, heard on my, um, on my first uh, interviews. So uh, I will really fast go through those. Have you completed a postgraduate school in aesthetic medicine? Uh, this one is not so important. Um, let me tell you why. People in Poland, I think, um, the, the company owners, um, value more your um, experience and certificates than postgraduate school. It's all, I think it's a great benefit to have one, but it's not so important. So if you, if you don't have this school, but you have uh, thousands of trainings, then it's, um, it's still possible that you get the job easily. Do you have certificates from training courses? If so, which ones? Uh, this one is important. And um, please, if you are um, up to do your first interview, bring those certificates with you uh, so the, the uh, employer would see those on the paper. Um, it's really good to collect those and to put all of them in your CV. How much do you want to earn? I'm not saying that you need to know um, on your first, uh, before your first job, how much do you want to earn, but please don't answer to this question, I don't know. Um, seek for the answer also on this group, on this Facebook group um, that was on the slide before. Uh, people talk about it, so find the answer. Uh, think about how much you would like to earn and maybe you won't um, get this amount, but still it, um, it will be better than answer, I don't know. And what is your availability? Um, in aesthetic medicine, I think you won't, um, you won't have the full-time job. So uh, for sure, someone will propose you one day or two, day, um, two days in a week. So be prepared to this question and um, know your ability. Have you worked with some certain products? And here, there are not so many products on the market that you, um, okay, maybe in a different way. So you should know which, pro uh, each, um, which company produces what product and you i'm not telling you that you should know um exactly how it works and uh, you don't you doesn't um, you don't have to have any experience with these certain products but you should know that for example this certain product z contains hyaluronic acid because it will look more professional um, on your uh, during your interview that you are um that you are oriented in those products um, are you open to marketing activities? As I mentioned before, marketing activities are part of uh, 2024 uh, world. And um, I think every single clinic would like to um, run those activities. So if you are open to those, I think it will be a great benefit. But if you're not, just say it. And um, the worst thing that you can do is tell uh, people that mm, that you want to take part in this marketing activities that you don't you don't want it you don't like it and um, i know it's hard but uh, sometimes it's better to to just say okay maybe i will try but uh, it's not my cup of tea but um, i'm open uh, do you have your own business? This is just um, the question about the form of employment and uh, you should also know the answer to this question. 
So what type of contract would you like to have? Do you have experience working in other places? Of course, you will get this, um, this question. And uh, it's not a shame if you will answer that um, I, I didn't work anywhere. Uh, that's okay. Um, as soon as you have a great will to, to practice, um, you will have a big knowledge and many courses, I think it will be enough to start the first job. And the most important question, are you independent? If the answer to this question is no, then you should start from the beginning and um, ask yourself a question, do you sh should you start your first job right now? Because um, independence means for me um, that you can handle your um, your complications, you know how to deal with vascular occlusion, you know how to deal with edema, and um, at least you know how to act with uh, when something happens with the patient. Those are real people, and uh, they want us to uh, to know how to act in a case of uh, of complication. Uh, so it's okay if you um, can't do every single treatment, but really you should know how to deal with the, with the complications. So are you independent? Yes. And it means that you really know how to uh, stay safe. And right now, what questions should you ask? Because sometimes we forget that we are also um, a valuable person. So uh we also should ask questions and we should value ourselves and right now i will um i will show you on what topics should you um what topics are important for you and that sometimes companies are also unfair and you should watch out on some um on some um, places uh, actually the most often those are chain stores and uh, yeah so <laughs> let's go to the questions who provides the products mm, this is a simple one just for you to know uh, if the company provides the product or you should provide the product by yourself is there never aesthetic medicine doctor working in a clinic this one is important it's really good to have a second doctor working in a clinic still um two is not one and the, um, you you can always um, have a support um, and you can always give the support to the other doctor is the clinic insured and in the event of a complication due to your fault do you share the responsibility equally or does it fall entirely under your insurance this one is super important because in many clinics, it's like uh, the whole responsibility is on your side. It means that in case of complication, uh, you are responsible, only you. So uh, this is a question that you should actually ask. Does the clinic collaborate with a cosmetologist? I really love to work with cosmetologists. So this is a great, um, great uh, benefit that you can uh, work uh, with uh, the of the cosmetologists in a team is there a person responsible for reception and handling payments during your work believe me or not but there are places that um, in which you are a doctor but also you are responsible for the reception and handling payments so it is just for you to know um before you start your job <laughs> if uh, if such practice is in this clinic does the employer provide training? If so, on what basis? And the second one, are there loyalty agreements? Those two are connected. And um, in many clinics, um, there is this policy that they provide you trainings, uh, free trainings. Sometimes you need to sign a loyalty agreement. Um, it means that, for example, you will um, have the trainings, free trainings, but um, you need to work at least one year in this um, particular clinic. And if not, it, you will have to pay off. So uh, it's good to know before you start. Uh, is there a non-compete clause in the contract, meaning can you also work in other clinics? Uh, this is this I can see quite often, but uh, still you can find places that um, 
that don't have this clause. Uh, this means that you can't work as an aesthetic medicine doctor in the same city, uh, doing exactly the same uh, job in a different clinic. I can understand this one. Um, so it depends on you if uh, you um, agree or not. Can you post pictures of patients as you treat um, the patients you treat at this clinic on um, your social media? Here you should watch out because in some chain stores, uh, there is this um, is clause that you can't use um, the pictures of your patients and they can only use uh, them on your social media. This is um, bad for you and for your future journey because uh, it's your work and you can't show anyone um, the treatments that you are doing and the style that you work with. So um, watch out uh, at this one. Uh, who is responsible for summarizing the number of procedures you have performed, which will be the basis for calculating your payment. This is just for you to know if you need to run the special diary when you um, when you need to write down all of your treatments and the product that you use, or maybe there is someone who is doing this for you and um, and do you need to, um, you know, to summarize it and you are making the invoice or maybe first of all you will get a, a list of the, of the procedures from someone from the clinic. Is the clinic a VAT payer? This is only for you to know. Um, is it registered as a medical entity? This is super important because um, in Poland, the insurance, the, the doctor's insurance, um, doesn't work if you are not working, if you're not uh, making your um, aesthetic medicine procedures in a medical entity. It means that if you work um, in a cosmetologist um, or in a hairdresser, uh, then your, um, your, your uh, insurance wouldn't work. Have you consent? Uh, have the consents been consulted and prepared uh, prepared by lawyers? This one is really important when it comes to the uh, third uh, third question. So, if the whole of the your the whole responsibility is on your side, it means that you need to have um, good consents. So, look at this consents before um, signing the contract, uh, because it's super important for you to have um, to be secured. Is the documentation in paper form or on a computer? This is just for you to know. Okay, we did it. Uh, right now, let's go further to um, questions and answers and uh, my experience. So right now, if you have any questions, you can write them down in um, the chat and I will answer to all of your questions. I will try to. Uh, if you are ashamed or something, you can always text me um, on my Instagram, uh, it will the name will show um, in the second slide. So uh, I'm waiting for the questions, and if there are not much, I will summarize this. Okay. Okay, so right now I don't have any. So um, I will tell you about five things that you should remember uh, from this webinar. So if you want to find, okay, uh, Ava has a question, so I'm waiting. Okay, I have one question. How does Polish law regulate the doctors sharing information about their work, photos, and procedures they perform? Uh, it's not a problem. In Polish law, there is no regulation about it. I mean, only you can't show the names 
of the companies. So you can say that, okay, I'm doing the um, treatment with hyaluronic acid and we are making um, a gene enhancement, but you can't say that you are doing this with the product um, Z, for example. Um, about the photos and procedures, also you can show the photos, uh, you can you can show the procedures, but without the names of the companies, just that. Okay, um, so just wondering, besides Alex, is there any other web you would recommend for applying for the job? Uh, yes, there's also Consilium, I will write it down. Sometimes there are, uh, can I? No, I can't. Why? Okay, wait, my assistant will send you. Um, okay, I think she will just uh, write it down because I can't, I don't know why. Um, what job a cosmetologist do when you cooperate with them? Oh, they do a lot of fittings, so um, this is the main things. Uh, so they also create, they also speak with the, um, the patient and consult them uh, about their skincare routine. So they are, um, they are making for them the better skincare routine plan. Uh, also, they're working with, uh, with um, microneedling uh and uh, with the um, with the peelings acid peelings so this is it um uh, i don't know everything what uh, they are doing but um i really like to work with the cosmetologists because they uh, take care about the skin from the outside and also they take care um uh, take care about the skincare routine Okay. Is it possible to start working as an aesthetic doctor by renting a cabinet in a medical center? Yes, of course it is. Um, it's uh, quite uh, often, the people do it quite often in uh, this way. So they are renting a cabinet in a medical center and then you need to um, provide yourself with the product. You need to have uh, your own deals with, uh, with the um, companies. So everything is on your side. Okay, someone is writing. And when you are renting a cabinet, usually what should we watch out for? Uh, oh my God, this is a hard question because I have never mm, did it. Uh, I'm working in someone else's um, places, but uh, for sure, for how long, um do you need to rent the place and um, can you uh, actually stop the um the uh can you stop renting this whenever you want or is there um some kind of um, some kind of fee that you will need to pay if you do it um for example earlier uh also what else I think that it's it's like about the renting of the house. Um, it's not so hard. I think you should just read the um, the agreement and uh, just read it carefully. Uh, okay. Uh, pay for this. Or what should be the usual pay for the business owner? Um, do you mean here, like when you work in someone's place? or when you rent the place, because I don't know uh, how many should you pay for the uh, renting of the place. It also depends um, in which city would you like to rent this place. But if it comes to working in someone else's place and, um, and when this person provides you with the products and the reception and uh, everything, then it's from 30, um to 70 percent for you um from the treatment and uh, always it's like that that there is a price of the treatment then you need to 
um, then you need to count the product that you used. And uh, from the zoom, you will get from 30 to 70%. Uh, okay, is there more complications due to that? Would you recommend renting a cabinet or taking a job they offer in a city clinic? It depends. If you get, uh, if you are a beginner, I think it's easier to start working in someone else's office and uh, someone else's uh, cabinet clinic because um, you don't have to um, take care about anything. You just can uh, focus on developing your social media, on learning, and um, the things like the. Um, the medical trash, the reception, uh, answering the phone calls, also the um, medical program. Uh, it's uh, it's quite expensive. Also, um, you need to count the costs of, uh, for example, books or different or non-lekash or um, any other um, place when people can find you. Uh, so at the beginning, it's hard to start your own clinic. I think it's better to work uh, somewhere else for one year at least. But still, if you have money, you can do it. If you have money, you can start from building your own uh, aesthetic clinic and um, and uh, hiring a manager, a receptionist, uh, everyone. So it depends. Uh, do you recommend to have a personal accountant? Of course, I recommend to have a personal accountant. Um, yes, this is, uh, but it, it depends if you are, um, on your own if you have your own business then yes but uh, if you are working on a normal um, on a normal agreement um, i mean job agreements then i don't think it's the uh, it's useful so it's really depending on uh, on what kind of um, agreement you have okay Mm, everything I think it's everything uh, so for just for you to remember first thing from this webinar is that um, you need to seek for the job and so maybe you won't get it as fast as you want but still you can just send CV um, everywhere you can ask anyone uh, who maybe know someone who um, who would like to have you in your clinic so just look for it um, second uh, value yourself so please remember all of you that you are doctors and still it's a big um, big achievement to to become one and uh, you should value yourself third thing it's education. The, if you want to be a really good aesthetic medicine practitioner, uh, you need to stay updated. You need to go to the, the congresses. You need to read the, um, the industry magazines. So it's really a lifetime work. And um, what else can I tell you? <laughs> that uh, you shouldn't give up. And um, sooner or later, you will get your first job. And the last one is enjoy your journey. So if you really love what you're doing, it will be easy for you to find um, the first job. Um, okay, and another, another question. Um, what kind of insurance do you recommend? Uh, what do you think about working as a trainer in some pharma companies? Okay, so uh, first question, what kind of insurance? Uh, there are many uh, but in Poland, uh, in Poland, there are many um, companies that uh, take care of the insurance, the doctor insurance. Uh, it's uh, PZU, uh, I will write it, and also this one. Um, and there, you just go there, you are uh, talking with the person that um, is there, and you are telling them that you are a doctor, you would like to do um, aesthetic medicine, and you work in um, in someone else's um, place. So everything that is uh, important about you, about the job that you are going to do, and 
uh, then this person will give you the best possible um, option, I think. But you need to read it carefully <clears throat> because there are some uh, clauses. And that, for example, this is important one in Poland, the insurance doesn't work when you are working on uncertified products. So if they don't have CE sign, uh, it means that you your insurance is not working and everything is written down in the, in the insurance agreement. When I um, wanted to have my first um, agreement with the um, insurance company, I read it carefully like three times and I was asking about everything. I was um, very annoying for this guy, but uh, at least I knew everything. So uh, right now I feel safe. And what do you think about working as a trainer in some pharma companies um, as a trainer in aesthetic medicine field or because why pharma? You mean um, the product um, owners, so the big companies that uh, um, that are making the products, right? If yes, I think it's a great deal. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I haven't uh, worked in such, but I think it's good to flirt and buttocks. Okay, yes, so I think it's uh, really good. If you uh, have this opportunity, then just uh, ask for the um, for the for the clauses in your agreement. Uh, what will be on your side? What uh, would you have um, from this? And uh, if the um, uh, if this is good for you, uh, then why not? Okay, might be some more questions. Okay, <laughs> so I think uh, there are no other questions and we can finish i hope that um i helped you still okay the last one sorry the last slide oh my god the last slide so if you have any other questions you can always um text uh, me uh text me here is my instagram account and also you can um call um the the employers from Amir and also you can uh, write down an email to this email if you're interested in everything and you have any doubts I'm here to help you I really think that we are a small group and we should support each other so yes I'm here for you thank you very much um, and hope to see you soon uh, during our next webinars bye bye <laughs>